In our next journal entry, we're going to account for completed jobs which our company, Marcus Sofas, actually sold during the period. And our information tells us that during the month of January, the company sold only one completed job. They sold the goods manufactured in job number two, and they did so for $46,000, and the sale was on account. Well, every time, as a manufacturer, you make a sale, it's going to necessitate you to have two journal entries. The first records the revenues related to the sale, and the second records the expense. Let's start with the revenues. On January 31st, on 131, we need to account for the fact that we sold forty-six thousand. We sold the goods for $46,000, and our customer owes us that $46,000 right now. Well, since they owe us, we are going to debit accounts receivable for the amount that we are billing them for, $46,000. So from the entry to record the revenue portion of any sale, the debit is always to your payment method, if you will. It's cash if you're being paid in cash. It's accounts receivable. If you're being paid on account, it could be notes receivable if you come up with other, some other fancy way to finance it. However you're getting paid is going to be your debits, while your credits will always, always, always be sales revenue. So we're going to credit sales revenue for that forty same $46,000. Again, the sale price of the job. And here we're going to say that we sold completed jobs. The second entry records the expense. The rules of accounting, if you will, say that for the production of inventory, which you intend to sell, you can't record any of your expenses in, related to production until you actually sell the goods. And in this case, we actually sold the goods created in job two, which means we need to get to finally expense all the production costs of job two, which we're going to do under costs of goods sold. So cost of goods sold is going to get debited. What do we need to decrease on our books? Well, the cost of job two, while well, it was a work in process, went into whip inventory job two. When we finish job two up here, we transfer those costs in to finish goods inventory with a debit. Finished goods inventory represents the amount of inventory that you have that is completed in a sellable condition but has not yet been sold. Well, this has been sold at this point, which means we got to take it out of finished goods inventory. And if cost goes into finished goods inventory with a debit, it comes out with a credit. So we're going to credit finished goods inventory for a total of how much? Whatever the manufacturing cost of job two was. And you can find that easily on your job cost record. The total cost to produce job two was $18,000. Since we're finally selling this job, we get to expense the $18,000 that we paid to make those 30 couches for Sizzlack Hotel. So in my journal entry, I'm going to have the entry to record our cost of goods sold be equal to the total cost of the job we sold, which is $18,000. And here we recorded COGS on sale. Lastly, on January 31st, we need to record all of our actual overhead expenditures for the period. We guessed on what they were going to be earlier, and in the process of doing so, allocated our overhead based upon that guess. Well, now we actually know. And during the period, we actually incurred $2,850 of depreciation, $3,000 of rent, $1,500 of utility expense, $300 for insurance expense, and we paid property tax of 500 bucks. Well, actual costs, all of these costs we have, they're necessary for production, but you can't really trace them specifically to job by job. Like we don't know how much of our rent was incurred because of making job one, two, or three. So what do we do when we have untraceable costs? We put them in our manufacturing overhead pool. How much are we going to put in there? Whatever the total was for all of these indirect costs. So 2850 plus 3000 plus 1500 plus 300 plus 500 is going to add up to 8150 bucks. The credit is for whatever is causing you to incur that overhead. If it's the expiration of a prepaid asset, you might have a credit to prepaid insurance, prepaid rent, whatever. Uh, if it's for something that you purchased, which, or paid for, which you've not yet transferred cash for. It could be something to like rent payable, utilities payable, etc. But in our case, it tells us that all non-depreciation expenses were paid 
in cash, which means we're only going to need two credits. The first one is going to be to our accumulated depreciation account for the amount of depreciation expense during the period, which our information tells us is $2,850. And our credit is going, other credit is going to be to cash in this case, because all non depreciation expenses were paid in cash. So how much is that? Well, it was $8,150 for everything. And $2,850 that was accumulated depreciation, just subtract the difference, that's $5,300, which also happens to be $3,000 plus $1,500 plus $300 plus $500, all of our non-depreciation overhead expenditures. So in this entry, we recorded actual overhead costs. We have one more journal entry down here, which is an adjustment that we need to do to fix any under or over allocation of overhead that we've had during the period. But to be able to do that journal entry, you first need to figure out what is the current balance of your manufacturing overhead account. So we'll pair all our T's and we'll get back to that guy later.